Hello and welcome back to Shawlek TV. So it's a Monday morning, start of the week, um, half seven at the moment, 16 degrees, so hopefully gonna be a nice warm day. Just as well, because I'm working outside so I can top up my, my pasty tan. Uh, so, two jobs today. Um, first one being the fairly largest job, and the second one a slightly smaller one, um, which I'm gonna complete this afternoon hopefully. So the larger of the two jobs is the one I'm gonna film. Should only take me three quarters of the day of that being well. It's usually the ones you say uh, are going to be fairly simple to arm but we'll see how it goes. So the job description basically is I need to install a dedicated supply for an external defibrillator unit um, at a marina. So what I'm going to do is take a 16 amp supply from a Schneider distribution board using a 16 amp 30 milliamp RCBO unit. That's going to supply a 2.5 3 core SWA which is going to be clipped externally all the way around to where the defibrillator position is. Now at the defibrillator position I'm going to install a uh, IP rated external enclosure. Um, within that enclosure I'm going to put a metal clad unswitched uh, fuse spur. Now the reason for it being unswitched is obviously I don't want anyone turning it off because this defibrillator unit does need a constant supply. Um, the constant supply is basically for, I mean the only reason this defibrillator unit needs a constant supply is within the box that houses the defibrillator is a tiny little heater. Um, this little heater kicks in anytime the temperature drops below 8 degrees so it does need a constant supply because um, if the defibrillator is at less than 8 degrees um, it's not ideal so we don't want anyone being able to turn it off. Now. Um, the marina staff have got to check every day that this defibrillator unit has um, got power so rather than them um, keep going to the fuse board every day to checking the RCBO still on, checking the uh, fuse and the spur, I'm, I suggested to install a little LED panel light on the front of this um, adaptable box so all I'm going to do is wire that in series off the secondary side of the uh, fuse spur. So that'll be illuminated. Um, the only time it won't be illuminated is if there's a loss of supply either by the, via the RCBO or the um, little 1362 fuse. So um, all they have to do each day is check that that LED is illuminated to know whether there's still a supply there basically. So hopefully nice and simple for them. So yeah, basically I'm just gonna show you the full install of that today and I shall see you on site. So see, see you shortly guys. Show you exactly what the plan is with this defibrillator unit. So this is the unit itself. Comes with a nice lock on the front, nice solid case. As I said, it comes with a plug on, a supplied with a plug, so you can use it temporarily. It does say in the, the instructions that you can plug in, but it does also say, um, where is it? It is recommended that the plug is removed and cabinet wired directly into the mains 240 volt supply via a fused outlet spur to its own circuit with an RCD protector. So basically what's going to happen is we're going to mount it in the shade here because it is recommended that it is um, mounted out of direct sunlight. Um, then we're going to put next to it, as I mentioned earlier, one of these little adaptable boxes. IP56. And inside there I'm going to use a metal clad switch fuse spur. Um, I've used a metal clad one just for the ease of putting these stuff and glands in the back box basically so um, nothing more than that. Um, that's the little LED indicator light I'm going to use on the front amount of series at the secondary side of the, uh, the fuse. So that's going to be somewhere there then we're going to run up along the top there with our black SWA all the way along there through the wall there. Then we go into this little room here which is quite loud clip all the way along and then when we go through there we are into the kind of the little plant up there we'll come through cleat along there straight down and then we'll go into this melon duran fuse board up the top planned off for swa and there is a spare way i've already seen on here just there uh, so we'll put one of our uh, schneider c16 um 30 milliamp rcbo units just like these ones here over there or there sorry um, and that'll be it basically obviously we'll test it all at the end um, so yeah I'll show you the install there's a little heater I was on about so all that does all that will do is kick in um, 
when this cabinet reaches below eight degrees. Um, the cabinet's also supplied with a little magnetic light because um, there's a little magnetic strip just there. And all this does is clip under there, put a couple of AA batteries in it and then it's got a little sensor. So if you do need to go into the cabinet, that little light, LED light will come on um, and you can see what you're doing. Right, so first things first, I'm gonna mount the actual cabinet itself, just so you know, position of our, um, our adaptable box on the wall, and then we can start um, pretty much connecting things up and get cracking. So, um, the manufacturer's instruction says it should be, re um, it is recommended the height of the cabinet to be, sorry, the recommended height for the cabinet to be mounted is one meter to 1.5 meters from the ground to the bottom of the cabinet. So, all I'm gonna do, <laughs> Tape measure. And I'm going to go 1.35 there. Little pencil mark. Um, so now we've got our position for that to be mounted. Alright, the next bit is probably where I could do with an apprentice because this cabinet is actually quite heavy. Um, what I'm using to fix the cabinet is just some inch and a half 10 screws with M6 washers. Um, this is a nice solid wooden uh, tongue and groove wall um, with a few battens down there so I should be able to find a nice skill fixing. I've um, got my level, let's keep it level obviously. <laughs> so yeah, let's um, give this a go um, on my own. If, um, like I said, I could do with an apprentice really. It's the ideal situation to lift this up and then me just bung a couple of uh, screws in but we'll see how we get on. So two screws in, not too hard in the end, um, two more to go and then we're done. Right, so that's it all fixed and mounted. Um, it is quite solid on there. I'd probably happily hang on that, but I'm not gonna, just in case. <laughs> so yeah, that's that up. All right, so next part of the task is obviously unwrap this. And what I'm gonna do is mount this in line with the top of the unit up there, because that's gonna be the most um, aesthetic, I believe. I'm gonna put a stuffing gland in the bottom here for this uh, flex ball to come up into. That'll be clipped to the cladding. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is bring my SWA into the top um, of this box. Normally I wouldn't bring it into the top, I'd bring it into the bottom, but because this is actually sheltered above here, um, I'm not overly concerned about the water ingress at the top, but um, yeah, that's the way I'm gonna go. So straight up and then clip along. So with this adaptable box, you get these nice little uh, screw covers. So that's just to keep the IP right into the box once you've fixed it. And they literally pop on there. 
inside the hole just like that. Get another one out. So, pop in the hole. He says. That one's being a pain. I'll do that one in a <laughs> So, pop in the hole. Oh, typical. Here we go. So, yeah pops in the hole just like that and keeps the IP rating of the box. So now we've got that mounted, I can now gland off this cable in there. Um, I'm going to get my spur mounted in there and then it's just a case of getting the SWA in, back to the board and wiring it all up pretty much. It's on the wall, nice and solid, that box is nice and solid. Gland in the top for the SWA, stuff and gland in the bottom for the actual uh, defibrillator supply. That's going to come through that stuff and gland and then into that stuff and gland in there. That's going to be like an auxiliary wire that just goes out to um, this little indicator light of metal on the front. Um, obviously the inner core of the SWA is going to go straight into that stuff and gland and into that box where the connection will be made. So we're now about to put the SWA, gland, um, SWA cable in, um, get all that clipped along. Um, and then it's just a case of connecting in the fuse board and connecting here and then we are pretty much done to be honest. Right, so all sorted connecting this end, um, just show you exactly what I've done. So like I mentioned at the start of the video, we've got the defibrillator cable coming in through that stuff and gland just down there. That goes into the unswitched fuse spur, into the secondary side. So that is the fuse side, along with the, the defibrillator cable, I've actually put the uh, live and neutral for the indicator light. Uh, that comes up and goes into the secondary side as well. So obviously if there's a loss of power, um, that light will no longer be lit. Letting the uh, lit, letting the people know um, the power has been lost. Um, SWA glanded all off, glanded at the top. Um, waterproof gland, that comes down into the stuffing gland and that's connected straight into the primary side of that um, spur. Just a note to add, I only had five core cable to do this in. Um, so what I've done is cut off the other cores at this end, but what I've done this end is connected them spare cores into the earth terminal. Um, that's obviously just to stop if there is a short circuit on that cable. We don't want them unused cores um, becoming live and unnoticed. So if there is a fault on that cable, it will take out any associated protection. All right, so that's it for this end. Um, just gonna go and connect the other end and then we're done. So I've got my cable round into the plant room, a kind of tiny little plant room. Um, and I've taken the cover off this fuse board. Now ideally we'd like to obviously isolate this fuse board, um, safe isolation, have it completely dead. Um, but in this situation that's not possible because uh, a lot of the socket circuits are on here, uh, house and servers and they don't particularly want us to do that for now. Um, not too bad about doing this one because it's a fairly, um, well it's not particularly old this board really. Um, so it's fairly safe. Um, and we're only going to be working up here and along to, to that fuse uh, that spare breaker which is there which we're going to swap out with a new one in a minute and down to the neutral and earth block so um, it's not too much involved but obviously you just got to be very careful um, we're obviously going to have to drill this while to put our um, SWA gland in but what I'll do is I'll put like a dust tray, dust pan under there to stop any swarf flying into the fuse board um, so yeah we're all covered there really so we're just going to remove this old breaker and put our new schneider rcbo into this fuse board so old breaker out New RCBO ready to go in. So 
we want to make sure you do the terminal up that goes onto the main buzz bar nice and tight make sure it's clipped into the wall properly right now we've just got to put this down to the uh, earth block and this down to the neutral block so get that sorted Right, so I'm now about to drill the hole in the top of this fuse board. So like I said, what I'm going to do is place this uh, dustpan right under there. Um, that will stop any spore falling into the board um, when I'm drilling and when I'm filing out the hole. So let's get this hole drilled. Oh, like I said, I've, I've already marked the hole in the top where, exactly where I know where my gland's going. So I uh, obviously want to do that first. So another reason for putting this underneath as well is just to move any cables out of the way so when you do come through with the drill you don't go straight into some cables and blow yourself up basically. <laughs> Alright so that holds all in, just going to give it a file out quickly. Again keeping this dustpan in the top. fold it out, keep the dustpan in place and brush away the swarm. That's our hole done ready for our gland. Done in here now, everything's all connected up. So we've got our SWA gland made up on the top there. Like I said earlier, we've used the um, banjo here to earth it uh, at this end of the fuse board. So the SWA is earthed from this point. Uh, done a little flying lead round there, all the way around. That goes with our um, supply cables earth and the RCBO earth to terminal in the back. This is our connection here. Um, so they're all nice and tight, that's ready to go, so when I'm ready to energise I'll literally just push that little um, yellow tab over and that will energise up the primary side of this RCBO and then when I'm ready I will flick that on and do my live tests and RCBO tests. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it, it in here, I'm going to put the cover back on and label the fuse board up. Right, so I'm now doing the last test. Um, this is going to be the RCD test. Uh, performed all the other tests, so um, insulation resistance is all clear. Earth loop and R12 readings all good. So, like I said, just going to test this 30 milliamp RCBO. I'm going to use the auto function on the meter. So, one probe on the earth, one probe on the neutral one probe on the live, literally just press test and that will go through all the sequence half times, one times, five times on both the waves so all six of the tests have been done, like I say half times, one times and five times of both times side of the waves 
Uh, so one times reading is 28.5 milliseconds, plenty good enough. And five times reading is also 28.5 milliseconds, so it's also plenty good enough. So once you've actually done your tests, make sure the test button works. There we go, and that's our test and done. I'll show you a couple of the labels I've put on already. So we're all done in this little plant room now. Um, there's our breaker, defibrillator. I've labelled that nicely back up, um, so that's quite clear to see. I've got it off at the moment because I'm just um, labelling up the other end. I'll show you what I've done so far before I put the adaptable box cover back on. So all I've done is labelled what this spur is for and what fuse is inside. So if anyone takes it off, they know exactly what it's for and what fuse to replace if the fuse does blow. Um, so now I'm going to put the front back on and label that all up as it should be. Show you the finished product. Um, everything's all wired up now, all labelled, all tested, all ready to go. So I'm just going to show the customer what I've done and then we'll be off. Um, so here's a little adaptable box. We've got a nice green LED uh, indicator lights to uh, show the supply to the defibrillator is healthy. Um, I've just labelled here to say there's a 3 amp fuse within, what circuit isolates it or if it trips, know what they know what fuse board to go to. Um, obviously the, the connections on the back of this indicator are uh, exposed, so danger 230 volts if you do enter this cover, uh, enter this um, adaptable box. Um, got my little sticker on there just if anyone gets any problems. Um, and that's it really. So yeah, that's, that's the end of this video. I um, hope you've enjoyed this one. Um, bit of a different one I suppose to the others I've done. Usual, like the Facebook page, Shawlek Electrical Limited if you want to see videos. Um, don't forget to like, comment whatever you want in the comments and I'll see you on the next video hopefully. See you later guys, take care.